On Law Weekly today, we look closely at issues of national security, human rights, and the rule of law against the background of the recent Shite protests, their clash with security operatives which led to the loss of life. We talk to some senior lawyers on whether there's continued justification backed by law for the detention of some persons by the federal government who maintain that rule of law must be subject to the supremacy of the nation's security and national interest. Also showing on the program, President Muhammad Buhari swears in Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed as the 18th Chief Justice of Nigeria, plus highlights from the ministerial screening of the immediate past Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, SAN. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shiyeli. On Monday, the 22nd of July, a protest in Abuja by members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, known as Shites, turned violent. The protest which led to the loss of lives was aimed at forcing the federal government to free the leader, Ibrahim el Zagzaki, who has been in detention since December 2015. With the escalation of violence trailing the protest, President Mohamed Buhari ordered the Inspector General of Police to hold the breakdown of law and order. There's been several reactions trailing the incident with some people calling on the federal government to obey court orders and release the Shite leader. Law Weekly sought the opinion of some lawyers especially on the issue of personal liberty, rule of law, and national security. The starting point was, are there any instances contemplated by the Constitution that allows the president to disobey court orders and give preference to national security? The position which the president has been taking, that security considerations should override the demands of personal liberty, is unacceptable in view of the provisions of the Constitution, Section 35, which allows for personal liberty. You cannot deprive anyone of their personal liberty unless you do it in accordance with the due process of law. And it's even more objectionable where you have the courts asking that you release an individual and the president says, no, he's not going to do so because of considerations of uh, uh, security. You find that Nigeria is not the only country that has these uh, concerns. All over the world, you have security concerns. But the courts are allowed to do their work to determine whether the person who is being detained should be allowed on bail or should remain in uh, custody. It is not for the executive to take the matter out of the hands of a court. So it's not something that is unique to uh, Nigeria. Um, all, all over the world, even when uh, there was a problem in uh, America involving Al-Qaeda and they put them in some Guantanamo Bay and all those things, they still allowed the courts to deal with these issues. So it's certainly not uh, tenable that um, we, should have, uh, we should adopt the position that the president is conversing. You will find that even under the military, when they want to pass laws which impinge on the personal liberty of the citizen. They normally put these outstar clauses in legislation, which says that no court can look into it. But we don't have that sort of uh, uh, restriction under a, a democratic dispensation. So there's no law presently now that will supersede the constitutional provisions guaranteeing a uh, right to personal uh, uh, liberty. So there's really no basis for uh, these people to be detained contrary to the orders of court. But if the courts have looked at it and the court says, release him, then the president can really have no justification. He cannot be a judge in his own cause to say that, I say the man is, uh, has committed a, an offense and I am the one going to determine his guilt. You have said you are detaining him, you put your position to the court. The court has said, okay, we've listened to you, but release him. They, they've got to obey the court order. We can't have a situation in which the executive will continuously flout court orders. They should release him, expedite the trial process. If at the end of the day, they are able to establish to court that is guilty, then we will have a legitimate basis for holding him. Then anybody who protests that will then be offending against the law. But now their process seems justified because they, it is the government that appears to be acting unlawfully. 
Another senior advocate of Nigeria, Professor Fidelis Odita, also shares with Law Weekly his view on the issue. I believe that the detention, or the continued detention of El Zazaki is unlawful because the court has granted him bail on several occasions. And so if you look at Section 35 of the Constitution, which guarantees his right to personal liberty, that right is being fundamentally violated. And I don't see how there could be any justification in the president continuing to detain him. And also, I think, to the same extent, um, Mr. Dasuki, who has also been unlawfully detained. They may have committed very grievous crimes against public interest, but the Constitution provides a framework for the determination of such issues. And the Constitution does not give the president, or indeed anyone in Nigeria, the right to continue to detain persons contrary to court orders. And I think it's a very dangerous thing to do, to engage in selective acceptance and enforcement of court decisions. Of course, national interest has to be reflected. But national interest is reflected in various provisions of fundamental human rights. So when you look at Chapter 4 of the Constitution, it gives you a right to life. It qualifies that right by saying, in certain circumstances, your right to life could be abridged. In relation to the right to personal liberty, it also gives you circumstances in which your right to personal liberty could be violated. In relation to the right to property, there are certain circumstances where your right to property might be violated in the public interest. For example, compulsory acquisition in the public interest for a public purpose. So public interest is injected into various provisions of a constitution. We have no freestanding doctrine of public interest which provides a safe harbor for the president to hide or take refuge in when violating people's rights. That's the first point. The second point is that insofar as national interest is involved or engaged in some of these matters, the courts are the proper institutions to determine whether or not public interest requires the continued detention of a person. It is for the executive to adduce reasons why they consider that in the public interest or national interest, the person should be detained. And then it is for the court to weigh those considerations against other factors in deciding whether or not, notwithstanding that public interest is engaged to an extent, the person should be released. So the president cannot be the final arbiter of what constitutes public interest in this respect. And as I've said, there is no freestanding doctrine of public interest which entitles the president to act unlawfully. Senior legal practitioner D.C. Ogunye also gives his perspective on the issues and what can be done by the government going forward to prevent the bloody protest. The Sheikh El Zakizaki and the Shiite uh, movement versus federal government fight uh, in the country is very unfortunate. And yet it can be said, as some people have said, that the Buhari presidency will not be the first presidency to be a loggerhead to the shared movement in Nigeria. To me, that does not offer any justification for the continuity of hostility. The fact that previous government, including very despotic government, because people are going back as far back as uh, the Abasha era, citing it as an example. I also held a zigzag in Podakot prison, for example. Um, the fact that previous government did that uh, does not offer any justification for it to continue in the prevailing uh, circumstances. And I say that one way to prevent this bloody protest, these skirmishes, and this death is for the government to fully surrender to the dictate of the rule of law. Uh, and people have asked, uh, how does the government do it? I say, simple. Following that bloody clash in Kaduna on December 12, 2015, resulting 
in the deployment of overwhelming force by the military against members of the Shiite movement, leading to the record of at least 350 deaths that nobody had denied, and the demolition of buildings and dwellings of the Shiites, including their worship centers. Take El Zagzaki, who was injured with the wife, were taken into custody. Even as he had lost as part of the victims his own son. Recall that earlier, during the Gulo uh, Jonathan presidency, uh, the preceding year, in 2014, uh, July specifically 2014, some of them also had been killed, 35 of them, including three of his children, right? So, following that attack in 2015, he was taken into custody. And he was held in that custody for months and months until in 2016, when a federal court ordered that he be released and that he be compensated in monetary sum. The government had an opportunity then to comply with that order and release him. The government didn't do that. And it was only in 2018, after he had been detained for three years, which indubitably meant that he was held in custody illegally and unconstitutionally. Because the Constitution provides that if anyone is accused of committing a crime, he shall be investigated and be prosecuted in court. So he was not prosecuted for about three years, held in custody. And when the government then realized that the pressure and the clamor for his release was becoming unremitting, and that his members had started coming to Abuja to protest, first, Government brought him out for a fleeting period to say that he was alive and well as a proof of life, right? And thereafter, he was then charged to court in Kaduna. And many people, mischievously in my view, have been saying that he's now a guest of the high court. So he's now charged with a capital offense. The offense mainly being that during that crisis in 2015, that he was accused to have conspired in the process leading to the death of one corporal, uh, uh, Dan Kaduna, Yakuku, Dan Kaduna, and that because of that, he's now facing a charge of murder. My view, very simple and sincere, is that that charge was mischievous and it was a belated attempt to regularize an unconstitutional detention. If somebody kills somebody and you are the state, you can't wait for three years before charging that person and after a court had ordered that the person be released. That is not the rule of law that I know. And so the long and short of resolving this crisis and of avoiding recording these deaths is to comply with the rule of law. Let take Ezakzaki and the wife be released.